Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy Elliott here today at the Andy Elliott One Percenter Podcast. Today I got Kenny Brooks. If you guys don't know who he is, go to YouTube right now, check him out. Kenny's one of the funniest people in the world. He's one of the best salespeople probably in the country, and he's got a story to tell you. If you'll listen today, I promise you today's going to level you up. You get to know who Kenny is, and I have him here today with us in Scottsdale, Arizona, because he's going to bring the heat. Kenny, thank you so much for being here with us. Hey, thank you. I appreciate you for having me. Hey, yes, guys, sir. guys, listen, if you don't know who he is, like I said, go check out Kenny. Kenny, let's back up for just a minute, right? I know where you're at today. You're 38 years old. You got a family. You're one of the best salespeople around, but you ain't always been that way. Am I right? right? Mm -mm. Okay, let's go back for just a second. And like I said, if you don't know who he is, you might want to just stop, pause this, go check out Kenny on YouTube so you can understand. Because once you watch the video, once I watched the video for the first time, I think it was about six years ago, where some lady recorded you on YouTube. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, now I don't know if that was planned or not planned, but I'm going to no. tell you this. That was one of the funniest things ever. It was funnier than Saturday Night Live. And I'm not a very funny guy. I, I was a great sales guy, broke a lot of records and all that stuff. But we always talk about being humor, being quirky, making people laugh, making connections, and making people like you. And literally what I learned in that video is you made those people like you like that. Mm. You ran the whole conversation, which is taking control. The word tracks you had, you didn't just come up with that stuff on the spot. That stuff was created in a lab way before you got to that front door. Right. You believed in yourself, you knew what you're gonna say, you executed, ultimately you took the cell down. But man, it was entertaining and it didn't even seem like a sell. Mm -hmm. It was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. Right. And that's the reason why you built a name for yourself because you do things differently. And this is the one percenter podcast and Kenny's a one percenter. So you do things differently than everybody else and you get different results than a lot of people get. Right. Uh, Kenny, <clears throat> take us on the journey real quick. Before you get into what you got going on today mm -hmm. and where you're at, take us back. How did this get started? How'd you get in sales? Well, I got in sales really basically uh, on an accident. I, I would say like, um, First of all, um, they say salespeople ain't born, they made, but I feel like I was born to be a salesman because, like, um, the first off, I come from Detroit, Michigan. I was born in Detroit, Michigan. My mother had six kids. She was a single mom, She so she was like the mom and dad. And one thing that I learned from my grandmother and my mother is the hustle, you know what I mean? Yeah. They say that, you know, it ain't your fault if you was born poor, but if you're over the age of 18 and you die poor, that's your fault because you have something to do with it. So that's one thing that I can say from knee high that I looked at my mother and I witnessed her, just her work ethics and the hustle. And whenever she struggled, she faked it till she made it, you know what I mean? But one day, I remember I was like 11 years old, I grew like uh like four in four or five inches. I went from like four like four foot eight to like five three five four, and that was like pretty tall like for an eleven year old. So coming from Detroit, Michigan, you know, you're a product of your environment. And they think that like being an African American, you can make it out of poverty or the ghetto by playing basketball or being a rapper. So I was like, you know what, let me go and try out for the basketball team. And I remember going to um school I was like in the middle school, I was like either 11 or 12, I don't remember it firmly, but I know for sure that it was around that age. And I remember um, I I went to basketball practice, but I had like some bowling shoes, it was crazy. And I remember it being humiliated, they was roasting me, I was sliding across the gym, I slid out the gym to the lunchroom, they was making fun of me, I was humiliated. So I was like, you know what, this this the worst feeling ever. So I went home and I asked my mother, could she give me some basketball shoes? And she was like, boy, you know I ain't got no money to buy you no shoes right now, I'm trying to pay these bills. So right then and there, I was like, dang, but they say whatever you're looking for, looking for you, because it's like law of attraction. Now I learned all of this like at a young age. It's crazy because like, one thing, like, he who suffer remembers, and, and, like, I say that to say this is that, like, I teach my kids these things right now. I got them reading Rich Dead, Poor Dead, and, you know, Think and Grow Rich, the magazine of Thinking Big at, like, 9, 10, 11 years old, because this is something that they don't teach in school. You know what I mean? Right. They say, you know, like, one, that's what I learned, but just to get into it, the fast forward. So, anyway, I remember coming home from school, and on the telephone poles, we got, like, telephone poles on our corners, and they had, like, this job saying that you could, uh, you know, paper routes. You know how you deliver paper, yeah. newspaper? Yeah. So, they was like, you can make, um, $50 a week by um, delivering Detroit News and Free Press. So that was my goal. I was like, look, let me do this for like a week. I wasn't even gonna, I wasn't even gonna go back to basketball practice until I made the 50 bucks to just go buy me like some cheap basketball shoes. So I remember the first day going out, me and my, um, coworker, we was both like little kids. It was like an after school program. We would go out. The difference, what I learned at a young age is that it ain't no ceiling over your income when you a salesperson. You know what I mean? Because we had a salary like where like you just make a f flat 50 bucks by g doing this Monday through Friday from like four to seven. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So anyway, we delivering. They gave us like an address and we delivering a paper to these addresses and we actually 
deliver the paper to a wrong person's house. It wasn't really a wrong person. We delivered it, and I guess the guy canceled the subscription. So we came out cussing us out. Now, here it is. We from Detroit. But we work like the suburbs. We didn't work in Detroit because, you know, Detroit kind of crazy. Yeah. You go there trying to, they going to try to rob you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, it's, that's what, what it is. So anyway, we was going to the suburbs and everything. And like, what's crazy is that your perception is your reality. And I feel like that God, like he just blessed me with this talent at a young age that I learned real quick because we, we threw the paper to the wrong house. The guy came out. He's like, what are you doing? Throwing paper? I've been canceled. This he just was real angry. Like he, he said a lot of stuff. He was just cussing us out. Yeah. So me and my friend, we both like African America. We looking at this white dude. We look like this guy must be racist. That's the first thing. That's why I say the first thing we think like if it would have been a black person, we probably wouldn't even have thought like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So my, 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 my coworker was on go. He was ready to fight him. So some just clicked in. I was like, no, no, I got this. I got this 12 years old I, I still say this come back till this day like with sales because I use this at 12 years old and it worked I was like um can excuse me sir can I just ask you one question he was like what I was like you got kids he was like yeah I was like if two of your kids was playing and one broke the glass would you spank both of them he was like no I was like well you shouldn't spank me for the bad performance let me just call my stupid advisor and he started busting all left he's like no 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 I'm sorry I'm just having a bad day um just sign me up for another uh he like he we end up like I upgrade him like Beyonce he went from like cussing us out to like we like he didn't he canceled it and we keep delivering paper till we signed him up for a whole nother year subscription so right then and there i went from like a paper boy to a salesperson right there just off of you know what i mean just off of instinct you know what i mean and then like i don't know if you remember that movie blue streak mm -hmm. with martin lawrence like where he impressed the other detective so bad that he went in there bragging that's how my coworker was he was like ready to fight to like it was like mind blowing. He went in there like telling the, our manager, like, "Oh my God, you should have seen him. We was about to get into altercation. He just changed, just got mad." And so, the, so they end up making me a salesperson. So I went from making fifty bucks a week to going from welfare to Rockefeller. You know what I'm saying? Like I went from making like more money than my parents, like at 11 years old, because I was making. We worked off like a commission scale. You know what I mean? Okay. So I went from like making fifty dollars a week to I was making like three to four hundred dollars a week. You know what I mean? Yeah, at like okay. 11 years old, yeah, like, I was so making more. I was help. So it, it got it, it got crazy because at first my mother was like. I don't want you knocking on strangers' door. They can kidnap you, snatch you in the house. Then when she saw my first paycheck, oh, no, keep doing it, keep doing it, because I was helping with bills and everything. So I went from, like, what's crazy is that I went from trying to work this one week to get some $50 pair of shoes to fall, falling in love at 11, 12 years old to talking to people. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like changing people's minds just off personality. So what I did at that age, they said whatever you put in, that's what you get out. So I just started writing, like, jokes and one-liners, and I just started, like, uh, you know, like just sizing people up. This is 11, 12 years old. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I went from d doing that from like 12 all the way to like 14, 15 years old. Like I, 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 like that became like my job, summer job. I started hiring my little cousin and everything. And some of them couldn't do it. You know what I mean? Some people, they just was like, they mind wasn't in it. They, you know what I mean? Yeah. So fast forward, like around 15, I, I grew like even taller. I, I'm 6'4 right now. Around 15, I was like 6'1". So I stopped doing the sales and I took basketball serious. You know what I mean? I, yeah. Like I played all the way up to my senior year and my grandmother and my mother, they was like a big inspiration to me, like I said before, because they just taught me like the hustle, the work ethic, how to have personality, just how to get your best. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And my grandmother died when I was 18, right? So I dropped out my senior year because I felt like, I don't know, it's like really an excuse, but I know that she probably wanted me to finish school and everything. So, but I, I thank God that that happened because like when she passed away, like it's like something, part of me left, you know what I mean? So I was like depressed and like, I, I didn't even want to go to school, play basketball, do nothing. And I remember m um, my family had a funeral and they called me out. I really didn't even want to go to the funeral. I really don't like funerals, but I remember going to my grandmother's funeral and I put on like a comedy show. You know what I mean? Like, I, w I just, they, you know how you like funeral, I don't know if you know about funerals, but they yeah. actually, anybody want to speak and talk about remembrance of their like, grandparents? And I went up and I just put on a comedy show because I seen everybody was sad, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then right then and there, that taught me like how to like read a crowd and an audience, you know what I mean? Cause like, and that's how I, I, I start this to this day. Like I know how to read a crowd. That's how like when I hold meetings, I know how to get people attention. And that's yeah. how it is with like sales, you know what I mean? You never get a second chance to make a first impression. So I remember on my grandmother's deathbed cause she died from dialysis and she was on hops. I think it's hopsis, hop, 
when you die at home, I yeah, forgot what they yeah, call it. A hospice. Yeah, yeah, she was yeah. So she died at home, and I remember like on her deathbed, she was like, "You gonna be special. You like she was like, just keep, don't give up. She was like, I'm telling you, you gonna be, you gonna, you gonna shock the world. And she just kept telling me this, and I didn't know what she was really talking about. So when she died, I was like depressed and everything for like a couple of months, and then my brother, he like, he was like, um, he reached out. Matter of fact, no, my mother put me out right. I like I was homeless for like a couple of weeks because like I like I said I was a senior in high school and my mother like it was tough love she was like either you're gonna finish school or you're gonna get a job I'm 18 sure. you know what I mean she yeah. like wanted me to finish if I would have finished school I probably would have went to college I don't know play basketball but I was so depressed so she kicked me out so I was homeless I was living house to house with family members and then I even went to, uh, with my uncle I was like trying to even sell drugs you know what I mean I was just doing like negative stuff I wouldn't even yeah. you know what I mean in the right space and then I remember my older brother he called me up he was like my nickname poo poo people don't know that he was like poo poo <laughs> Like, people don't even know that's my nickname. He was like, um, remember you was doing that door to door when you was like younger? He was like, my friend, he doing this traveling sales job right now. He's selling a cleaning product. He making like a thousand dollars a week. He was like, you, you want to go? I'll go out there with you because I don't think you should be like trying to sell. You don't even know what you're doing. You know what I mean? And I was like, at first, I didn't want to do it, and then I don't know. It's just like I guess like my grandmother's spirit just was like go. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we 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 uh caught a Greyhound bus for like two days to like Minnesota. It was like a two-day, and I told myself on that bus, I said, this the brokers I'm going to ever be. I'm like, I was like, I ain't never in my life going to no job on a bus. It was just like, you know what I mean? It was like, I don't know. It's just I don't really like the, how I – like, I was on the bus for like two days. I smelt like I wanted to be alone. It was just bad. It was just all terrible. So, anyway, I got there, and I remember um, I had – I I was a new person. But I had bought like, um, yeah, I went out my, my first day. Now I trained like a half a day. I remember I went out because it was like the three L's. They said, um, look, listen, and learn. I already had sales experience from when I was little. Yeah, and all they did, talk. yeah, so it, it's like, I don't know if you, you can relate to this, but like as a salesperson, I don't know if you ever like shadow people. Sure. Like, and you ever went out with someone and you looking like, dang, how this person getting all of these sales? Yeah, you can't believe and it. Then you go out and you hear their sales talk and you be like, Dang, you making sales and you doing this? And you know that, like, your confidence and your enthusiasm, your personality, you got the whole package, but you missing something that this person had. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I was new. So See, I, I was new to the business, but I wasn't new to life. I wasn't new to sales. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when I seen this person making, like, 20, 15 sales, and, like, my, I, I went out, I was like, you know, I don't even need no training. I got this. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I went out, and I wrote six sales, like, my first day. They was looking like, what the heck? So I remember, like, and we got paid, like, daily. But we were, we got paid, like, off of, um, a commission. It was a sliding commission scale. You could make 25 to 50%. But we also had, like, bets and bonuses you got paid because it was, like, competition. So I remember um, the um, owner told me, he was like, look, what, um, you want to invest in yourself. So the first book that I bought was um, – the Greatest Salesman in the World by Og Mandingo. And I started mm -hmm. reading scrolls every day. Like, I would greet this day with love in my heart. You know, I would persist until I just started reading. And I fell in love with reading. And they said, if you want to have something from a dummy, put it in a book. And I remember, like, like it's crazy because I didn't even graduate from high school. But reading a lot of books helped me with my communication skills and then just talking to people. Because, like, um, Tony Robbins, I said that on my video, like, two years of door-to-door -door traveling is equivalent to four years of college communication, how you interact with different people. Because they help you with people skills, learning yourself, some people die at the age of 18 they don't get buried till they 70 because they passed away a long time ago mentally so all of this helped me with just like working on myself like self-help just you know what I mean just yeah. my mental because like sales is 90% mental you know what I mean it's 10 percent physical and that's like the, the talking part you know what I mean yeah. so I learned all of this and that's why I teach my kids this to this day you know I got a daughter right now that's 11 years old she make like a thousand dollars to fifteen hundred dollars a week just selling candy and like one of my big goals is i'm starting this um non-profit organization called uh school of hard knocks where like i give back to like my my inner city mm -hmm. well not just inner city i just give back to the communities and i show kids how to be young entrepreneurs because like i be said yeah because yeah. like they don't teach this in school you know what i mean some yeah. people they be in college and then they ha have a big debt and then you could get into sales you could get that out the, you know what i mean yeah. but they if you taught this in school it, it, i feel like it'd be a way better you know what i mean because you, you 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 can vouch for this it's so many people that don't even know that this is like a gold mine you know what i mean this yeah. like really sales is like i feel like it's like a financial illuminati 
Because people don't really know, like, it's a secret to society for real. People That's don't right. even know that the highest people in the world, like, they say the highest paid people in the world is actors and entertainers, but actually it's salespeople. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, like, it ain't no ceiling over your income. You know what I mean? You could go to sleep broke. You could wake up a millionaire with the mindset and just the tools. You know what I mean? So, but this is everything that I learned by just going door to door. I, I got, like, 15 years of experience door to door. You know what I mean? So, and that's what I love about my brand is because what separate me from, like, a Grant Cardone or a, a Tony Robbins or Eric Thomas, these big motivational speakers, is that, like, my brand is funny salesman. Because I get booked to do comedy or I get booked to teach and train sales just off my experience. You know what I mean? Sure. Because, like, it, it's crazy. And that's one thing. Like, I teach, I teach with humor because laughter is the best medicine for the heart. And that's what I did. People yeah, don't I understand. They like, they like, they look at a video and they, like, they don't know that I, I done been through pain. I done been through adversity. You know, I've been through, people don't know I got kidnapped by Indians all the way to selling Jamie Foxx, to not giving up, to knocking on a, a racist lady door that thought I was breaking in people's houses in the neighborhood that recorded me and found out that I had a gift and gab and recorded me and I had a 300 million view video, you know what I'm saying, that went yeah. crazy, that changed my life, changed my kids' life, changed my family life, you can get what I'm saying? Yeah. So people don't understand that, and for those that's listening, it's just all about believing in yourself, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they say, who you gonna sell first? I'm not a prostitute, but I'm gonna sell myself first. Once yeah. I sell myself first, it don't matter what you sell, you can have a bag full of, you know, shit excuse my French, but if you believe in it, you can sell it. You know what I mean? Yes, that's, that's right. Just, and, and I want to say something. And by the way, guys, you're, if you're watching Kenny, guys, it's early in the morning here. It's Sunday. We mm -hmm. got together. You flew in late last night. Right. Guys, we're just getting Kenny warmed up. Kenny's about to go through the roof. I know how this works, okay? But I want to say something. I want you to recap for just a second. People that come from nothing can end up with the most, okay? Everything you want in the, on, the other, on the other side of your life is going to go through pain, okay? And I'm just going to tell you this. As you're listening to the story, we could end it right there, and you could probably resonate with some of the stuff that maybe you're going through right now, maybe some of the stuff you've gone through, right? And at this point, he hadn't even got into the good part of his life. What he's gone through is the courage that he had to get on a bus, drive two days, right? right. Literally not enjoy it. It sucked. It was awful. Sure. And guess what? I'm telling you right now, this is how we all start. Every, just in case you want to know, any person that you look up to in the world right now at one point slept out of their car, grinded it for nights in the lab, nobody saw him. All the word tracks that he knows, which he'll get into in a minute, he'll talk about selling and all this stuff, but I want you to understand this. All these things were learned when the crowd wasn't there. All these things were learned when the stands were empty. All these things were learned when no one believed in you. No one. Maybe you had a couple buddies that thought that maybe you're going to do something, but not on this uh, a scale. And I want you to understand this, okay? He said something else also, your brand. Your brand isn't like a quote, it isn't something cute. It's, it's who you are inside. This guy knows how to make people laugh. And I'm going to tell you this, it's as serious as you want to be. People don't spend money when they're serious. Right. People spend money when they're in a good state, they're in a buying state, and they want to spend money and they want to have a good time. He said when he spoke at his grandma's funeral, right, he got up there and what he did is he read the crowd, but what he really did is he changed everybody's state. Everybody went from being down to being up. And when people are up, they spend. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's a state change. And I want to tell you this, when you knock on someone's door, what do you think the state's going to be immediately? Why are you at my front door? Right. I don't recognize your face. Who are you? And the fastest way to crack a joke, if you're good at it, because listen, man, you're not funny until you learn some jokes and then you get funny. Right. Everybody out there, he says he's got the gift to gab, but now he took that gift to gab and he took that, he likes to talk to people, he's not afraid, he's got courage. And then he learned some one-liner word tracks, which I know every day, all day, you're thinking about different things, how to say this, how to say that, how to wrap it. And, and then you write it down, right? Yeah. And then you memorize it, right? Mm -hmm. Because you know when your back's against the wall and you're getting hammered on, you're like, and I've watched you, we saw it live. And you know as you're recording a podcast like this or you're talking about something, you don't even get to see the real side of anybody. You get to really see the real side of somebody when right. no one's around, the cameras are off, and somebody tells you no. And you're like, that, 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 that. All that stuff comes out. And I want to tell you this. The reason why, um, and this is the cool part we'll get into, is what he's doing today. But the reason why I like talking where people come from, because so many people, they're discouraged to believe that, hey, man, this couldn't happen for me. And you're so wrong. You're so wrong, man. There's 8 billion people in this world. There's 8 billion people that could be massively successful. So Kenny is a great sales guy, but not only that, Kenny's a great dad. Kenny's already teaching his kids at a young age, right? right. What Kenny learned at a young age, but he's doing it better. Right. You're doing it better than your mom did it. You're doing it better than the mentors that taught you. And now you're turning into a mentor. You're giving back. I always say this, salespeople that are grateful, mm. win. A lot of guys burn out of this business. Right. You said at 11, 12 years old, he fell in love with sales. I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to flip it back to him. 
but you can tell the fact that he's traveling around now and you do this for a living you right. love this and this isn't your job this is your life exactly. every single person you interact with in life you're selling them and guess what whether you're getting paid for it, you're not getting paid for it you're in love with it and you're doing it you've lost your mind to selling and guess what you've gained life because of it and if you like income if you like being independent if you like being able to have the lifestyle you want for your family get great at sales right. that's it and if you can do that if you listen to this guy and as he's getting warmed up and he's kind of moving now a little bit closer to who he is today and you know as we just kind of started I want to tell you, sometimes I always like the, the, you know, the, the cool stuff, the sexy stuff. Everybody's talking about closing, negotiations, objection handling. Hey, how do you do this? How do you do that? Sometimes I just want to know the story, right? Because right. whether you're 60 today or you're 18 years old or you're an 11 year old and you're watching YouTube, right? And somehow you clicked on this and it found you. Guess what happens? Man, dude, this is your next deal. And if you'll listen and you'll freaking just pay attention, man, I promise you. You'll be telling your story one day, just like all the people you talked about, you know, Jamie Foxx, Tony Robbins, those people, they were in your shoes yeah. a long time ago. They were in my shoes. You know what I mean? I, I came from nothing. Hell, we got a $100 million company this year. Dude, I'm just telling you, people don't understand what can happen when you decide to go all in on yourself. And he said one thing, and I want you to miss it. He said, self-invest, okay? He bought a book. What did you do? You said it every single day, right? Like you, like affirmations, like you said, hey man, my life's gonna be great. This is what's gonna happen for me. Listen, there's a lot of people out there right now that have heard that before, but they don't do it. Success leaves clues, man. You had to brainwash yourself that you were gonna get this life. Yeah. And you had to block out everybody else, and guess what? He got it. And he didn't get it fast, okay? Right. He had a lot of small wins that stacked, yeah. but if you stay with it, you don't sell your will to win, and you keep that shit, and you don't break. Most people sell at some point. Yeah. They'll sell, right. okay? And that's when they tap out. You didn't sell, and that's where you're at today. So you're sitting there, you're selling, you're, you're, you're selling six bottles the first day. Lady comes out, records you, boom, shit well, no, goes no. viral. See, that happened later on. Oh, it happened yeah. later on? Okay. I was trying to, like, sum it up, but no, like, so I sold six, and then I, I got paid. How, how, how old are you right now, 20, 20 years old, 18? Yeah, I was, like, 18 i was fresh out of like so it's 20 years i was ago. like i was like yeah i was like 18 19. So okay yes yeah, yeah, so you're 20 so let's say you're this is 20 years ago because you're right. 38 today yeah. right mm -hmm. what year did that lady shoot that video um that was in 2000 there might be a million videos but you know the video yeah, the original, yeah you know the video had 300 million views with the couple yeah, yeah it was 2010. okay so we're going so, back so 12 got, years ago so, so 2003 i think it was like 2003 i was 19 actually. yeah so 2003, because I, I, my mother put me out when I was 18. And like I said, I was going house to house for like probably five to six months, staying with my uncle, staying with my aunties, my little, my brother, trying to sell drugs, boom, boom. And then my brother reached out to me when I was like 19, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And you and guys then, went to Minnesota. Yeah, we went to Minnesota. Okay. And then like I knocked out there for probably like a week. But my first day knocking, I wrote six sales and I made like 120 bucks and I went straight to Barnes and Nobles. I spent almost everything on books I bought. like, But the first book I bought was, um, um, Think and Grow Rich. Mm -hmm. No, the greatest salesman in the world. Yep. Then I, I went back. Like, it's like, I'll feed me more, feed me more. Like, and I addicted. went back, yeah. I went and bought Think and Grow Rich, Rich Dead, Poor Dead. I spent like my whole check, uh, How to Win Friends. The book that really like took me to another level was How to Win Friends and Fluids People by Dale Carnegie. Yeah. And like one of the favorite quotes I still tell everybody this day, they say, if you want to gather the honey, don't kick over the beehive. Cause people like, they be like, oh, I want to win. You know what I mean? But they don't want to do what it takes to win. People want to go to heaven, but they don't want to die. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, they, they, they want this, but they don't want, you know what I mean? I want to be successful, but you don't got, you got bad work at this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. People habits depend on their future. One of my habits was just working hard, you know, not giving up. You know what I mean? Like they said, if you want to quit, you should quit smoking cigarettes, quit cheating, quit lying, quit sinning but don't quit on opportunity so i take this and I, i've been running with it for years but anyway to make a long story short so i remember i read these books and then i just progressed i went from writing six sales to write 19 my second day my second day knocking i wrote 19 sales and then they had me training people like my second day in the business i'm going out people shadowing me but all, yeah, all i did was i was just cracking jokes you know what i mean I, like you never get a second chance to make so as soon as i get to the door i'm just opening up with like one-liners but that's what i did whatever you put in that's what you get out my like um my mentor at the time that trained me he said look because i asked him i said how do you um how do you make a thousand dollars and he was like um you want to write 17 sales a week he was like but what you want to do is that you want to go get you a notebook and just start writing 
you know, uh, one-liners, closes, um, human interest stories. I went and bought 10 notebooks. And he said, you want to write a comeback for every objection? Because they gave us, like, objections, like, not interested. Then I wrote, every objection, I wrote five different comebacks. Yeah. I'm not interested. My mom told my dad that, but nine months later I was born. I'm not interested. Yeah, I've never been arrested. That's why we got a permit. Every time they had something, I had something for I ain't got no money. I ain't come with no money. That's why we ain't come with a ski mask armor truck. I'm using all of this, and I'm breaking the ice with people. I'm actually mm. going to the door loving no. I'm waiting on them to say no. And then I already, I, I, I knew how to separate me from being a salesperson. I used to tell people that, can I just not? be a customer you not be a salesperson you do like me a little bit like 50 cent right mm -hmm. high five we have right here but can i say one thing like i'm opening them up because the eyes is the window to the soul and i learned all of this so it's like i just had this I, I i just knew the art of selling and i learned it super quick you know why because i was broke you know what i mean and i and i was like i was like i gotta get over this so when i started and then i start teaching other people and that's what really made me go to the next level because i had 20 kenny brooks on you know what i mean i just mm -hmm. just i just didn't and, and, and um like inspire myself i was inspiring other people i was yeah. actually taking them out there that's why i'm writing a tv show right now as we speak called door to door chronicles i remember knocking in this racist town um quarter lanes idaho and i got the episode called the n-word where i knocked on this racist dude door he said get off my porch n i said what that owe me five dollars he bust out laughing and i sold him true story like I, that's what i'm saying people don't understand like the, the they don't understand like personality like uh jeffrey get the sales bible one of my favorite things he said is people buy personality before they buy merchandise That's i done knocked on people doors and they were selling a house they lost their house and they bought a bottle from me oh, i don't got no money i just lost my house oh well you got a flashlight well let me help you find it and then i go straight and they end up buying because at the end of the day like it's just a defense mechanism I and you've this. changed their day yeah. i mean truly at the end of the day i'm just gonna tell you this you changed their day right yeah, that's it. I mean, you change, you, you physically go in and change people's states. And I'm going to tell you this. If you're listening, you'll understand something. Um, he's not afraid. When you went and knocked those doors, you were asking, hey, what should I do? First day, second day, people are following you now. They're shot on you. Really, you weren't scared. And a lot of people door to door are afraid. They're afraid. Would you agree yeah. most people are afraid of other people? No, that's They're fact. afraid what other people are going to think. Yeah. Dude, when you walk up somebody's door, you don't even know these people, okay? So it ain't like they hit in a lead <laughs> and then you're talking to them about what, the, what they inquired right. about. Dude, they don't want to see you. They don't want to talk to you. And you're at their home, which is weird, right? And at the end of the day, and it's really not weird, but it's weird to them that someone's at their front door and they don't know you. And the deal is, is that you're not scared. I just want you to understand this, right? Like, there's nothing to be afraid of. If you're in sales, all you got to do is build a personality. And like you said, he went in, and what did you do? You broke that ice freaking lightning fast. If anybody's listening to this right now, if you'll just go and you'll watch some of his videos that he's put out on YouTube, we watch you break the ice all the time. And how you do it, you said this, humor is uh, something to the soul, what would you say? Yeah, laughter is the best medicine for yeah, the heart. Yeah, yeah, laughter. He gets people to laugh constantly. Right. His one-liners, and what does, he do? what does he do every time you make somebody laugh? You're like, that, 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 yeah, what's up? And you do this, yeah, am I right? right. Yeah. Why does he do that? Why does he put his hand up like that? Because yeah. when you can touch him, you connect with him. Am I right? Yep. So he's playing body language on people, which people like that. People were made to, to inter, inter, interact with each other. Mm -hmm. And I really think a lot of people forget that, right? Right. So if we're here and we're smiling and stuff, the second we touch, we touch, we're cool, we connection. come down. Yeah. yeah. So if you'll watch him, and I'm going to let him keep going, but I just, this is a sales training deal just watching this. He'll, he'll hit somebody with something, ha, 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 boom, hey, what's up? Yeah. And he'll hit, once he does that, they come down. Right. That's it. It's like you guys know each other now. Right. You don't high five people you don't know. Right. So once you get them to high five you, they know you. Exactly. So I watched it, and the first time I was like, "Dude, this guy, look, boom, just touched him." I was like, "Dude, that's it, man. Every single thing that you've learned, you've put into play, and then you've like hundred xed it. Yeah. Anything that anybody is watching, if anybody that's out there right now, if you're watching this, think about the things that you've learned that you didn't apply. You're an applicant guy. When you learn something, you apply it. Right. Most people learn shit and they don't do nothing with it. Exactly. All those books they read. They're like thinking that book's going to make them money. Mm -hmm. No, dude, acting on it and yeah, recreating. You, exactly. Yeah, you've, re, you've recreated yourself Right, is what you've done. So you're jamming out now. People are following you around. You're teaching everybody. You got all these other kinnies. You're pushing it. You're starting to believe in yourself yeah. now. And you're ready to go to war. You're building your name. Right. Um, now, now, push up from here. What's going on? Right. 
So um, I became like the salesperson of the month, salesperson of the year. I just started killing. I was making like, I went from making like $1,000 a week. Then I, I just kept on buying books. Like the more money I was making, the more books I was buying. It was to the point I had like over like 300 books. Like then I got bought this book called um, The Magic of Thinking Big. And then that's when I started breaking records. Like I wrote I, I wrote 112 sales in one day. That's great. Man. Like I knocked on like 300 doors and I closed like 40% of my like customers. Like yeah. I, like, and I was like, I, my work at the I was working like eight, my mentality was like I'm working eight days a week and it's only seven days in a week. Yeah. I'm like closing people Lamborghini fast. I'm closing you off a handshake. Hey, how's it going, young fella? Let me show you why you about to spend a hundred dollars. And I walk up and they end up buying. Like they follow me. Ooh, boop, not that. Yeah. So it's it's like I started being creative because like you like people. That's what they was doing. I had people trying to mimic me and. They weren't getting the same result. So then I had to go to train. Look, you got to be yourself. I'm really a comedian. Like, I'm, I'm 80% comedian. 100%. I'm 20% salesperson. Because once I get these people to love me, they're going to open up their purse and tell me to jump in. But that ain't going to work for you because you got to be you. I got mm -hmm. people that sound like the clear eye dude using my joke. Clear eye, <laughs> pay me green, call me. Like, they just did no enthusiasm, no personality. So it's like I, I, like I was doing more training than selling. Mm -hmm. And then after that, that's when, like, it, it's crazy. It's just like... I. I promise you, it just happened. Like, I was just doing so much. Like, they said leadership is when no one's watching. And they said also leadership is when you do more of what you pay to do. Like, I was I was making a lot of money, but it was only a lot of money to me because I come from Detroit, Michigan, where I was, like, 12 years old making 300 bucks, 400 bucks at 12 years old. You know what I mean? That's and then huge. I was making $1,000 at 18, 19 years old. Then summer, I started working only the summer. And I'm, waking, I'm making, like, a quarter million at 19 20 years old i'm making like 200,000 300,000 three months knocking on doors selling a 40 dollar bottle of cleaner making 20 dollars off of each bottle because i was like tripling my sales I'm, I'm i'm like i was i was just closing deals so anyway i was like the top salesperson for like three like three four years like uh because i went viral when i was like 26. i went viral like 12 years ago i went okay. viral in like 2010. so anyway so i'm like I was like the top salesperson in the company for like four or five years straight. So I'm going to fast forward to how the viral happened. Like how. Yeah. So anyway, boom. So I was like the top salesperson, right? I was beating everybody. Nobody could beat me. This one day, this guy named Chris Amon, shout out to Chris Amon, because like he beat me this one day. He had like 39 sales or something. I had like 23, like, and I had like a slow day. Mm -hmm. And what's crazy about sales is that like when people, when, when I was beating people so bad that they wasn't even talking to me. They was like envying me. They was like, oh, he buying this product or he's not like they were just like making up rumors. You know how it is. Like, yeah. the, it's with, only with success, it come with hate and all types yeah. of envy and every. So anyway, this one day he just was like, how many sales you had? Uh, Mr. Goat, Mr. Jesus, the sales. And, I, and I'm like, I, I had a slow day. I had like 23. How many sales you had? You must have had a good day because you never asked me how many sales I had. <laughs> he was like, oh, I beat Kenny finally. I had 39. And uh, so anyway, we got paid off of Betts bonus commission. Betts is like we used to bet salespeople. Yeah. Then we had bonuses like they used to have like um the most sales or most cash or like we just have like like you know like yeah, all your senators right yeah. so anyway in the morning meeting i i got up and I, I was like i raised my hand i was like i gotta bet they was like what's the bet i said i bet 500 bucks that i go out and i work this guy chris area and i doubled his sales because i was like I was I was averaging like fifty to sixty sales a day. It's just that I had this one slow day. You know what I mean? Yeah, you want to like, torture this guy? Yeah. Now. So I was like, cause he 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 woke me up. It's like he woke the lion up. You know That's what I'm good. saying? So anyway, he made the bet. Boom. But come to find out, he worked the Indian reservation. She was like Indian. I thought he was like Spanish. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I, so he was Indian, right? So he really was like signing his people up. I don't know if you're familiar with um, California, but um, we was in this town called Temecula, and mm -hmm. it's like a Pachinga uh, Indian reservation. Anyway. So come to find out in California, they got like gangs and stuff. They got like Mexican MS-13s. They got like, they got like different gangs. At the time, it was an Indian gang that was beefing with a black gang, right? And here it is, I go in the neighborhood, which is their territory knocking doors, thinking I'm about to get some sales. So the first door I get to, a guy was washing his car. And I like, he had a gate. I seen him on the side of the gate. So I opened the gate and I'm like, you, we always like, like whistle Dixie, like in case they got a dog when they got a, you, hello. And dude looked at me, he said, get off my property before I blow your head off. He said something. He said like, and I'm looking like, what the heck? But I, I hesitated because I'm like, what? Like, I, my friend just worked over here. They went, I, I ain't know nothing. I'm, I'm getting to like the point though. Yeah. 
So I'm shocked, but I'm still there. He like, oh you, oh you think I'm playing? And he went in his car and grabbed the gun. I, so I walked up, and I'm I'm leaving, and he started following me with a gun, right? Crazy, true story too. So he started following me with a gun. So I jumped on the phone to call my manager. My manager had just dropped me off. This is the first door I knock on in the Indian restaurant. So I called. I said, man, I said, where you at? You got to come get me this dude following me with a gun. He started laughing. True story, my, my manager. He like, you were just in a meeting selling wolf tickets. Ain't you from Detroit? You used to guns and all of this. What's crazy is that I was like, it's crazy because like they looked at me like nothing can affect me. You know what I mean? Like I was like. I don't know. I, they, I, well, they watched you run. Yeah, they looked at me like I was stronger than the Holy Ghost. Like nothing can't, you, nothing can't. You know what I mean? So anyway, when he did that and hung up the phone, I said he must know something I don't know. So anyway, when I got off the phone, I turned around. I guess the God must thought I was on the phone with the police. He went back to his house, right? So it was a school to the left, and it was a lady. Like all right, so I started walk. I walk. By this time, I'm like in the street. But he didn't walk back to his house. So I started walking towards the school because it was like he is outside playing. I'm like, let me walk towards the school in case this guy come back out. And he, I yeah, bet you yeah, he's going to try in front of no kids. You know what I mean? They're going to see everything. So I'm walking towards the school, and I see this lady come out sad. She opened the door. As soon as she seen me, she ran back in the house. Excuse me. So I ran over to her house. I'm like, <laughs> like for rescue. So I ran over to her house and I knocked on the door. And I don't, like, I don't know if you know, like Friday the movie, they got them screens. You know, oh, California, yeah. they got the screens where they can see you through their house, but you can't see them. They got them little dark screens. Yeah. So I'm knocking on the door, like how the Jehovah Witness was knocking. So she come out, right? And she was like, can I help you? I was like, don't shoot, just a chocolate kid. This lady is blind, by the way. This is a true story. I'm writing a whole TV show. It's crazy. I've been writing it for like the last like four or five years. Anyway, make a long story short. I'm like, don't shoot, just a chocolate kid. She was like, is you dark chocolate or light chocolate? I'm like, what the heck? This is a chocolate competition? I'm like, I'm dark chocolate. <laughs> she was like, like Hershey? I'm like, yeah. She was like, oh my God, so you African-American? I'm like, yes, ma'am. She was like, oh my God, what are you doing in this neighborhood? She was like, do you know it's a war out here? I'm like, what? She was like, come in. So she let me in her house. And then um, she was like, what are you doing out here? I was like, I thought you never asked. I was like, you see the spot? I just got back into sales mode. Like, uh -huh. like, like, soon as I, cause like soon as she said that, it just triggered me right back into what I was out there doing. I was like, you see the spot right here? So she was like, no, 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 wait, you trying to sell me something? I'm like, yeah, I got the best thing since cake and ice cream. I'm trying to sell. She was like, no, no. She was like, wait, so you selling a product door to door? And then she just started telling me like, you in the wrong place. She was like, my brother, she was like, it's a war out here with um, black and our, um, and, and our um, she was like blacks and Indians. She was like, my brother just Damn. got murdered by African-American gang yesterday. And she's like, and I'm surprised my nephews ain't seen you. They probably would have tortured you. She was like, do me a favor. She was like, how many bottles uh, do you have on you? And I was like, I got four bottles left. She was like, promise me one thing. I was like, well, she was like, if I buy these four bottles, can you call someone to pick you up? I was like, yeah. She was like, because I just don't want nothing to happen to you. You can stay right here till they come. So she bought the four bottles, boom. Like, was, it was crazy. She was blind. She had the little stick and everything. She just started telling me, like, everything. So anyway, she ended up buying my four bottles, boom. So I called my manager back. I'm like, hey, I was like, look, can you come get me? So I told him, I was like, I told you it's crazy what's going on. I was like, look, I'm not quitting. You just got to move me somewhere else. He was like, well, you going to disqualify because you just said you was going to work the same area he is. And I said, well, you could put me in the back or something or put me somewhere else because I can't work here. They saying that it's a war. He, he, so anyway, he was like, all right, I'm, I'm pulling up right now. So he pulled up, boom. I come out the house. I see the white van, right, pull, like, turn the street. So I'm, I'm leaving her the house. As soon as I come out her gate and, like, get in the middle of the street, he like, he like pulling up. Soon as I get in the middle of the street, like five four wheelers just cut him off. Like they just drove up and just surrounded me. And one, the guy jumped off the four wheeler with like a, a gun and like an axe. He had like a last of them. He's like, you thought I was playing? That was the same dude that pulled the gun on me at the first. He's like, you thought I was playing? Didn't I tell you to get out of my neighborhood? He was like, my brother about to pull up in a brown native pride truck. You don't get in, I'm gonna blow your head off. And I was like, just shocked. So as like I'm standing there and they surrounded me, I see the truck, the van bagging up and then just turn around and left me. True story. So by this time I'm, I'm in tears crying. Then the brown truck just pulled up and he opened up the door. And he had a gun. He was like, get in before I blow your head off. And I was like, I promise you, I don't know how this happened. But I was like this close. I was getting in the truck, like about to put my foot in to get in. And then an unmarked police car happened to come out of nowhere, like just Soon as the police came, they, the truck bagged up the four wheel. They start like I guess they know their area. They start going through ditches and four wheel, and then the truck bagged up. And then the the, the um, police came and like rescued me. 
and then he called backup. You know what I mean? It was only one police car. So I was in tears, like crying. I was devastated. And I was like, um, I thought the lady called him because this happened in front of her house. I was like, did the lady just call you? He was like, no, I happen to monitor this area because it's been like a lot of crime and uh, violence going on. He's like, I'm surprised you would be in this area even trying to sell anything. He was like, you should know where you at before you, like, you should Damn. find out. So anyway, what's crazy is that this happened like at like 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, right? And it took like seven hours for them to find everybody. So he picked me up, boom, and I had to do like a police report. He took me back to the station, and they had like helicopters, and they was like looking for him. So they found them like seven, it was like seven, eight o'clock, boom. So like after I got done, I just had to wait there until they found them. And then I had to do like a standing lineup. Like I had to go into like this black room and then point them out. And there mm -hmm. was like five guys they had, but I don't even remember the two dudes, I remember the dude that was in the truck, and I remember the dude that pulled the gun out when we come to find out that was the two brothers, and that was the lady that bought the four bottles, nephews. But they was like mm. the leader of the gang. Yeah. It was crazy. So anyway, they, I ended up pointing them out, then they let me go. So when they let me go, the van came and picked me up, and I just lost it. The whole Detroit came out. I was, like, ready to fight, and I was just mad. I was like, I can't believe y'all left me here to die over a $40 bottle of cleaner. I've been y'all top salesperson. Y'all gonna do me like this. I quit. You gotta give me a ticket back to Detroit, boom. So anyway, they flew me back home. I had ended up quitting. So this is crazy, right? So this happened like in um, November, like 2009. So like January, February, 2010 come. They sent me a subpoena, you know, like a subpoena where you gotta go back and testify. Yeah. So they flew me back to California to testify against these dudes, right? So boom. I knew it was serious because as soon as they picked me up from the airport, I had, as soon as I got off, off the plane, as soon as I went and got my luggage, this dude greeted me with like a sign, like Kenny Brooks had a suit on. And then they put me in a car. I felt like Obama. Yeah. Because it was like, they had me presidential. They had like tinted windows. They had like two dudes with like earpiece, like they were secret, secret service. And they like escorted me like to, I was like Palmdale. They took me to like Palmdale, California, like in a desert, like in the middle of nowhere. You know yeah. what I mean? And had me like in a hotel where like they was like. like witness protection. With, I felt like 6 9 before 6 9 They had me witness protection, like just blocked off everything. So they end up, they, they took me there like, at, like this was like Sunday. I had court Monday. So they wake me up like at 6 o'clock in the morning, boom. And then we drive to like L.A. Like I had to go to court in L.A., boom. So we eat breakfast and they telling me everything that's going on. It's like 7.30 and then I had court like 8 o'clock. So we go through the metal detector, boom, boom. And it's two dudes, like I guess they monitoring me. So I was like, I got to use the restroom real quick. So I go, I get, um, go through the metal detector, go to the elevator with them. And then right before I had to go to court, I went to the restroom. So I had one guy standing, both of them standing right here, just waiting on me to come out. As soon as I walk in the um, restroom, this big Indian dude, he walking out. He was like, hey, you mother. And then he went like this. And I just turned around and took off running. I ran past the guys in there. I was like, this dude trying to kill me. And I just ran. I ran the opposite way of the elevator and ran down the exit steps. I just ran out of the courtroom and I just, just kept running. I ain't look back at nothing. And I ran until like I seen this gas station. Instead of me running inside of the gas station, I ran behind the gas station. I just started kicking on the door, banging on the door. So this guy came out, he was taking out the trash. I was like, please, can, can you call Can you call the police? Uh, someone trying to kill me. He was like, well, he's like the police, you know the police station across the street. I said, no, I just came from over there to the courthouse. That's where happened i was like Kid, i just need to use your phone so anyway they called the police right like 10 minutes go by and nobody ain't come so i was like can i use your phone again so dad he let me use the phone again so i called my mom and i was like you got to get me back to detroit somebody this big indian dude just threatened me i knew this was a setup that's why i didn't want to go on and then she was like i ain't got no money same thing she said when i was like 12 years old I, it was like the same exact I, well, you know, I ain't got no money. I'm trying to pay these bills. I'm like, oh, my God, I don't know why I asked you. She was like, ain't you in California? I'm like, yeah. She was like, that company you were selling, the cleaning products for, call them. You was a top sales for, I'm pretty sure they'll help you get back home. Just tell them what's going on. So I called them, boom. So I, was, I told them my situation. So the dude, he was like my car handler. He was the manager, though. He was like, let me call the owner of the company, and I'm going to call you back. I was like, I don't, I don't think they're going to let me use the phone again. I'm going to just stay on the phone, call them, like, I don't even know if they had three-way. I really don't remember. I mm -hmm. think he called me back like one or two minutes. I know they, I got a call back. And he was like, all right, well, this is what we can do. You can do one or two things. I just talked to the owner. He said that we could come pick you up right now, and we could take you to the Greyhound. And we would just pay for your ticket. It's like 280 bucks, like 300 bucks. They was like, and we would just pay for it. The only thing is that your bus don't leave until like 6 o'clock, 6 or 8 o'clock that night. And it was like 8 in the morning, you feel me? So I had to wait like 12 hours to get on the Greyhound. That was he said, or 
we could come pick you up and we could put you in a nice neighborhood and we can monitor you and you can go knock doors and we can use your commission and we could pay for the rest of your ticket because we could we could pay half for the ticket your ticket like five six hundred but you know like if you order a plane ticket in advance it's like cheaper but if you yeah. pay for it right there coming straight from california to detroit it is about that much still that much right now probably even more anyway so I thought about, I was like, I'm not about to stay at no Greyhound for no 12 hours. This, they already know how I look. I was already devastated. You know what I'm saying? Can you just imagine they having guns put on you, kidnapped, and then oh, yeah. you go to court, and then Shit, they no. threaten you. Like, it's just like, I, I like, and then I always had in my mind, that's what really separated me from any salesperson in this world, I think, because I always had this mentality, no guts, no glory. You know what I mean? I guess from being 12 years old, knocking on people's doors, and I wasn't afraid of nothing, and then being from Detroit, and then that mentality is like, it was, so I was like, you know what? All right, come on, just pick me up. I'll go knock. So they, it's this, that decision I made changed my life forever, I think, because if I wouldn't have made that decision, I wouldn't even be here with you today. So anyway, bam. They pick me up. They drop me off in Tarzana, California, right? So I guess it's like rich, successful mm -hmm. people. So I'm knocking for like two hours, but I'm like, I'm not Kenny Brooks. I'm like not the person I am because I'm really just, every door I'm knocking, I got this negative mindset, like just thinking about the, what yeah, you're not in going your zone. on. Yeah, like I haven't, you got to remember, I haven't knocked in like three, four months since that situation happened. Yeah. And then I'm out here knocking to get home but I'm not thinking of what I have to do. I'm thinking about yeah. what just happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what I learned knocking on doors is tough times don't last, tough people do. Because at the end of the day, I knocked on like probably like 40, 50 doors. They would just slam the door, just boom, like just turning me down. And I would sit on the corner. I was just crying. And I just said a prayer. I remember it. I don't even know. I just know in a prayer I said, please, Lord, just give me peace of mind. I promise you, if I get out of this, I promise you I'm going to be a better person. And I when I tell you God worked in mysterious ways, the next door I knocked on, this older white dude just came to the door cooler than the other side of the pillow. He just was like super open mind. He was like, hey, young fella, what are you doing out here? I thought you never asked. And I just like, thank you, Lord. And I was like, you see, and I just started cleaning, right? And then he was like, wait, do it clean hard water. He's like, I got this spot on my shower. We clean it out by. And he had me come in. And when I walked in this house, I seen he had pictures with like Kobe Bryant, Shaq. Like, he had pictures with old Lakers and new Lakers, like, at the time. Like, he had pictures with Magic Johnson, Damn. Kareem. And I was like, you must be a doctor. He was like, how do you know that? I was like, you got a lot of patience. And then he started laughing. He was like, that's funny. He was like, because I'm, he's like, I've been a doctor for the Lakers for over 30 years. He, like, the doctor, like, yeah. when get injured and stuff, yeah. he work on. So he was like, you ever thought about being a comedian? You're pretty funny. I was like, yeah, that's my, that's my um, goal. This is a vehicle that's driving me to my success. I was like, they said if you could knock on someone's door that you never met before and make them laugh with your sense of humor, you wouldn't be afraid to perform in front of an audience. He was like, that's funny you said that. He was like, you know who Jamie Foxx is? I was like, yeah. He was like, you know he stayed right across the street, right? I went, I, like, when he told me that, I went from a salesperson to a groupie. I swear to God. Like, as yeah. like, soon as he said Jamie Foxx, I was like, what? I just took off running i ran all straight over there i done left my product and everything i, I forgot that i even sold him he was, and then he called me he's like wait wait where you going he was like you left your product like i just like left like everything at his house and then he was like so he called me back and i he ended up buying like a bottle so i go across the street to like jamie fox house but jamie fox had like a gate you couldn't even see his house it was just a gate you know yeah, what i mean big wall yeah and like so anyway i'm ringing the buzzer and what's crazy is that Nobody ain't answered. So I go to the next door. I'm going to the next house. I, like, you know the video that everybody seen? Yeah. Where I clean, like, the plant vase, the couple and yeah. stuff? That, they stay next door to Jamie Foxx. Like, I'm oh, in wow. front of their house, right? And as I'm walking to their house, I see, like, a brown two-tone Maybach pulling the gate. So I ran back over. I was like, oh, this is my big break. This is Jamie Foxx. So I run back over to the gate. So as I'm going to the gate, the gate started closing, but when I got in front of the gate, he had like them body sensor gates. Like it started opening back up once yeah. my body, because it wouldn't close all the way. Mm -hmm. So like the gate started opening back up, and then my mind I'm like, oh my God, I'm really about to go on Jamie Foxx. I'm about to sell Jamie Foxx. And then like he got on the intercon, and this camera started looking at me, and he was talking to me. He was like, wait, what are you doing? No trespassing. And I was like, COD. And he was like, all right, one second. So he ended up closing the gate, and I'm waiting at the gate, right? So he pull in the garage, and he come back like two minutes, like on a golf cart, right? 
and he driving up. He like fired in the mud, driving up. Then when he finally started getting close, I'm like, wow, that's really Jamie Foxx. So he must have seen like my spray bottle from my hip, right? He was like, wait, wait, you trying to sell me something? I thought you said COD. I was like, yeah, come on down. And then he started busting out laughing. And then he was like, not only is you funny, you funny looking. Then he started talking about my teeth. And I just, we just start, like how I met him was crazy because we just started joning on each other. We just started roasting. Like he was talking about my teeth and stuff. And then I started talking about his ears. He had like some little earrings. I was like, dang, man, you rich with them little earrings. Your earrings look like sugar. I remember that was the joke I said <laughs> that like broke the ice with him. He said, oh, you know what? You funny. I like you. Come here. And then he like, he, he told me to get on the other side, of, like the passenger side of his golf cart. And he drove up to his house and he like he just he was cool man it was crazy he just introduced like he just told me like his whole life story within like 20 minutes he told me how he was adopted from the small town like terrell or tyler texas and he he got adopted he introduced me to a stepdad that stayed in his guest house and then he just like he just started telling me how he used to be a shoe salesman and how he used to knock doors and stuff and he said that he remember he just told me how he got his big break and i just started crying because i was like you know what it's crazy because i wasn't even supposed to meet you well, the craziest thing is that i wasn't even supposed to meet him this yeah. is all god this was like because he you remember that movie the django mm -hmm. he was filming the django right and he left his script at home and he ended up coming back home to get his script and that's how i ran into him mm. and what's crazy is that it's, it's it's crazy it's unbelievable he was telling me like how he knocked on someone's door and the person turned them down and then that's the same person that drove he said he was on a corner like quitting and the person drove back up on him like man you pretty funny you ever thought about um doing comedy he's like yeah he's like i'm doing an audition for a living color this show you should come and he that's how he made his big break he said Damn. he used to go to open he said he used to knock doors early in the morning to like six o'clock at night just to pay like for like his comedy and like because he used to sleep in his car he said he was homeless and he said he used to go to open mics every night and he said he used to just sign his name and they never used to pick him and he said one day he, he said his real name not even jamie he said he put jamie on his paper because they used to always pick female comedies first and they thought he was a girl and they picked jamie and he went up and did his little wanda you know like i don't know yeah. if you remember the show he did this little wanda act yeah. and he said that's how he got his big break and I was like, man, I wasn't even supposed to meet you. I was like, man, I had just got kidnapped by Indians. And he was like, what you was doing at 7-Eleven? I was like, no, I got kidnapped by some real Indians. I That's was crazy. Like, <laughs> I was like, I was just homeless. And I knocked, I had to knock doors just to make, make a way home. And then he was, he just told, he just did a prayer with me and he bought a bottle, signed it. And I swear when I tell you the next door I knocked on, cameras. I'm going to be quick like Nestle, be like Michael Jackson, that's why neighbor started reminding me of Nicholas Cage. You see, and then it went super viral, and that, that's how. Dude, that's crazy, man. Well, number one, I'm just telling you, that's amazing. And if anybody's listening right now, I'll just tell you, uh, Jamie Foxx, that's one of your mentors, right? Clearly, they always say, my mentors in life are people that have gone where I want to go. And I watch, and you watch people, right? right? And that story, how he told you how his whole life changed, mm -hmm. you believed it. Right. And it, it really did happen for him, but you believe they could happen for you. And then what happened? You got back in your zone, mm -hmm. right? Earlier that day, you're not in the zone. You ain't selling shit. Right. All of a sudden, guess what happens? You remember, man, you know what, dude? This guy can do it. I can do it. And you truly believed in that person. And I think that right now we, th we think about what these podcasts are about, right? Mm -hmm. Which clearly it's not just about us telling or talking about ourselves because that's not what it's about. What it's about is the same thing that Jamie Foxx did for you. This is this should be done for someone else. And if someone's sitting there and they're like, man, dude, I want a life change. I want a life shift. I want to have a different lifestyle. Right. right. Cool. Just consciously pay attention. Right. All you got to do is believe. Get back in your zone. And if you're in sales, everything can change with one door. That's it. One door, one knock, one handshake. Literally, just like Jamie's did. He got shut down. All of a sudden, that person invited him to a living color. Boom. But nobody sees those stories anymore. Right. And that's why 99% of this entire podcast has been about what the one percenters do. They pursue their mission. They pursue what they want. Right. They know that they're capable of more. And I'm just telling you right now, even at 38 years old, you're just getting warmed up. Right. I mean, I know that. Okay. And you need to know that. Mm -hmm. And that's important. And I want to tell you, I've gone through my whole life and I've hit every time I hit dead E zero rock bottom, right. a new me's reborn. That's dangerous. Right. And sometimes we need to get the door slammed in our face. And I mean, yeah. literally with life, yeah. like we need to, you know, have a crazy guy threaten us, yeah. run out, get scared, freak out, cry. But what you did is, and one of the things that um, I really resonate with a lot, our power comes from God. And I'm not a real religious person, but I got a ma major relationship with, with Christ. And I'm telling you this right now. Yeah. yeah 
when you said, hey, God, if you get me out of this one time, I swear I'll be a better person. Dang. I've said that so many times, man. And guess what? When I do, it's always when I get smashed. And I'm literally down. I don't, I'm, I'm just, I'm crushed. And then I don't have nowhere to go. So what happens, and I think a big uh, a part of the story is, you know, you were trying to do it on your own, right? Mm. But when you give it all to God, right. but dude, mountains get moved. You know what I mean? And I don't talk about that a lot in sales training, but I'm telling you this. If we just went back to him every single day, mm. right? right? Instead of only going to him when we were like, hey, if you, I probably, if you get me, if you, right. get, if you don't let me right. drown this time, yeah. right? Yeah. Then all of a sudden he shows you what you, you can do when you're in your worst state, exactly. right? Oh, Imagine true. if we went to him when we were in our best state right. and we were jamming, crushing it, yeah. killing it, right? Yeah. Oh my God. So I'm just saying as we get older, we get wiser, right? Yeah. And as we're going to push anybody that's in a rut or somebody that's wanting to go to the next level or somebody that's just trying to start, you know, I would tell you anything's physically possible. Right. And where you're at today clearly happened because you were chasing and pursuing your dreams. You got lost along the way. But guess what? You still got that spark that every single time, man, that something's going wrong. You're like, man, I can go back to sales. Yeah. I can go back to sales. That's it. I've stayed in sales my whole life. I'm 42. We're about five years difference. Right. But I'm telling you, man, if anybody's just watching this, in the next five years, six years, you're going to blow up. Right. And what does that mean? You're going to blow up because you're going to help a lot of other people. Right. What happens is in the beginning, you get in sales and you figure out how to get your own family, their lifestyle, the one you want for them. Once you do that, then you help other people get the same lifestyle that you got by teaching them how to do it. Right. And the biggest part is your belief. I know that for sure. And secondly, if anything, I know that when you get in the zone, even from this podcast, when you watch this over in the beginning, you know, you get in this zone. Right. And once you get that belief and you get that stuff starting to flow, mm -hmm. man, it's like endorphins firing. <laughs> A text right. message going off or you getting in the zone, man, getting in the zone, that's your rush. I mean, that's like jumping out of a plane. When you knock on a door, it's like jumping out of a plane. You know what I mean? But you know the outcome. Right. As long as you believe in yourself, and I believe this, and if anybody's watching this, we use these words, it's called delusional belief. Mm -hmm. Delusional belief that whatever you think's going to happen is going to happen. You create your own reality. You know, when you said you close 40%, 50% when you're knocking on doors, every other house, I mean, that's almost unheard of. But guess what? The delusional belief is you knew that that was going to happen. Right. People can't get to that state, and that's why you find people who have been in that state, who have been in that mode, who have been in that zone, and then you study them. Well, your perspective you started with in the beginning. You said your perspective, which is the way you see stuff, the way that you think it's going to go, is probably the way it's going to go. Right. right? And a lot of people don't have that perspective. Right. So I would tell you, if you're watching this, perspective is massive. Secondly, man, dude, I don't care where you're at in life, recreate, change. Find a mentor, find someone you want to look up to, and you probably have tons, right? Who, who are five, five, six mentors, people that you look up to today in life? Literally, as you're growing, as you're pushing, you know? Right. Obviously, comedy's, comedy is a big deal to you mm -hmm. because your whole life's about being funny, making people laugh and stuff right. like that, and that's your style. Who, who do you look up to today? If somebody's watching this, other than, you know, saying, hey, hey, you know, watch some of the right. stuff I'm going to be putting out, check that mm -hmm. stuff out, but um, who would you yeah. tell them to look up to, people that you watch today that could maybe help them? Well, um I look up to like um, Zig Ziglar. That's like one of our like favorite. So Zig your whole Zig life, uh -huh. yeah. Zig Ziglar, um, Kevin Hart. I love that. Um, Kobe Bryant was like one of my big, like far as like not just like what he do on the court, just at the court. Like he like, cause I, I traveled so much, and like me and um, I think Blake was talking about like when I used to travel like. You living out of a, you know, a hotel, yeah. out of a, you know, a yeah. bag, you Life know, on a book, right? So I didn't really have time for my kids, you know what I mean? And when I used to just see Kobe Bryant, like how he was like a great role model and a great father, you know what I mean? And yeah. then we lost him with his daughter. I said, man, some people just like they take life for granted. And that really made me a better like mm -hmm. father, you know what I mean? Yeah. So he was like one of my big inspirations, like Kobe. Um, I say uh, Tony Robbins, he mm -hmm. a big one. Tony Rob, it's like it's like sales, like uh, like Tony Robbins, Kevin Hart, um, Jamie Fox, and um, uh, you like people that play with passion. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that one of the things that I'll say is I watch some of your videos, right? I sit back. One of the things that you do is you have fun with what you're doing. Right. You know why? Because you really like doing it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big deal. A lot of people want to make money, but they really don't like people. Right. Okay? <laughs> you like seeing people laugh. Yeah. And you're really passionate about what you do. Right. 
I'm just telling you, when you're in the zone, you don't need anybody to motivate you. You motivate yourself because you're passionate about what you do and you play to win. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's why you went on that Indian reservation, right? To take on that dude to double his stuff because you want to win. You don't right. care. I don't care what the odds are. You're going to take him. Right. Um, but I'm just telling you, as, as life's busy, there's lots of people to look up to. There's, there's, there's tons of uh, social media out there. There's lots of content. One of the things that I always look at before I go to follow somebody or look into them or, or I want to learn from them, you know, I say, hey, man, let me ask this question, right? Did this guy do what they're teaching? Are they teaching in theory? Like, hey, I watch something and I kind of understand how that works, so now I'm going to go teach it? Mm -hmm. Or were you a true applicant? Like, did you do it and now you're teaching other people because you did it and you were successful at it? Right. What I like about you, Kenny, is that you did it. You did, and that's a big deal, okay? Because right. there's a lot of guys out there that are teaching stuff that they didn't do. Yeah. And if you didn't do it, then you really don't know what someone else is going through. So as you're teaching shit, you can't help people. Right. So before we end this podcast, and you're doing great today, and really where you're at now isn't even what I care about to what you've gone through to get to where you're at. Because right. your real story, you're going to start writing. Mm -hmm. You think it's now, but it was really then. That's, that's what built the foundation of this house that's going to be this mansion you're about to create. Right. So if somebody's watching this right now, right? Mm -hmm. Salespeople go in slums, mm -hmm. okay? Salespeople get scared. Right. Salespeople, when they're going to talk to people, right? They mm -hmm. have backslides. Right. They have backslides. They're, not, they're doing great one month and they're having a bad month. So what do they do? They don't believe in themselves. They right. lose that, right? Yeah. If you could say maybe one, two, or three things, right? Mm -hmm. If any sales pros watching this, we got, you know, like I said, roughly about 350,000 people that we train currently, right? And a lot of these guys, what I see is they lose their mind, they lose their belief, you know, they, believe, they, 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 they get hot and then they go cold. What is something that really helped you turn every time you would go? And I know that you talked about God, you talked about, you know, obviously, um, and, and I wanna talk about something real quick because I almost missed this. Your one-liners, mm. okay, all your one-liners, right? How do you memorize your one-liners? Because this is big, right. you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, how do you, how much time do you spend to memorize your one-liners? You said you get 10 notebooks, you write yeah. all your stuff down. I did the same thing. But, but talk about that real quick, because every single thing that you say when you're in the zone to sell, mm. right, you just can't come up with it on the spot. That shit right. is tattooed on your heart, right? Mm. Okay, so how'd you learn your word tracks? How do you learn them now, even right. to today? Well, first of all, I, I listen to a lot of music, uh -huh. And I used to just like like two of my favorite rappers is like Lil Wayne and mm -hmm. Eminem. Yeah. And I just like they metaphors, how they put the words together. I like that. And people they like when they watch my videos, they think I'm a rapper. I don't know why they be like the way you put words together. Cause you flow. Yes. Because yeah. that's so that's what I did. Like my inspiration, and that's another thing too. I didn't even bring them up too, like with the hip hop. But I just like how they wordplay mm -hmm. was. So I knew to separate me. I just used to like, I just, I'd be in the zone, like, you know, like you got some basketball players, they'll go listen to a song and go put up 50 points. That's what I did. I go listen to something and I just go put up sales. But what I did is that I was in a lab. I stayed in the lab. I'm writing jokes down. I'm practicing it in the mirror so I can mm -hmm. look at my facial expression, my smile. You know, Chinese proverbs say, if you can't smile, you should open a store. So I'm looking at all of this. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I, And then I'm taking the meat, spit out the bones. And then I'm, I'm actually going in the field because like like they said kobe bryant what made him great is that when he he was in the gym early and he made sure he shot a thousand jump shots you know mm -hmm. what i mean yeah so he made sure he perfected his art he perfected his craft and that's what i did i i practiced this and then i went out in the field and then whatever worked i kept that whatever didn't work i said okay this didn't work for that one because you got to remember some people like even when i i, I read my comments on some of my videos like oh you use too many black jokes oh you degrading yourself you self-degrade so and i don't really look at that i just try to you know because like Alan Iverson said it's a hundred thousand people that don't like you don't worry about them because you got millions of people that love you you know That's what I it. mean yeah. so I really took the criticism and I just made success with it you know what I mean because yeah. you know Jesus didn't sell everybody so no. who am I but I knew that I had people that still love me but it was because my creativity and what I did off the field you know what I mean yeah like like the one thing one of my favorite quotes by Drake he said, while people out partying, I'm trying to make music, they can party too. See, we used to work six days a week, right? Yeah. And we was off on Sunday. So Saturday night, we had people go out and party. And I was in my room writing down one liners, yep. practicing it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, I, I, I never took a break. You know what I mean? Like, even when I was off work, I was still at work. You know what I mean? Because I took this serious. Yeah. So the biggest thing for people that's out there listening, I think, is that number one, you got to find your why. Why do you get up in the morning? Why you do this? what drives you you know what i mean yeah. and then number two is that you got to remember the good days forget about the bad days you know what i mean 
Yeah. You gotta you gotta remember like like at tough like you you gonna you gonna get that. You know what I'm saying? Like you gonna like right next door to adversity is success. That's it. You know what I mean? You yeah. gotta you gotta go through feel like Thomas Edison said, I failed and failed and failed my way to success. So you just can't give up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that I love in sales. The longer it takes for you to get the sale, the closer you is to one. And I used to really just play a mind game with myself. You know what I mean? Let me see how many people gonna tell me no. Cause I'm gonna turn this no into a yes. So I I created this thing called the eight mile close. Like one of my favorite movies by Eminem is Eight Mile, mm -hmm. when he was on stage and everything that the person was gonna say about him, he said it to him. Remember? I like that. He was like, I know I'm from the trailer park. I know I'm this. I know I'm that. You remember? Yeah. I don't know if you remember on Eight yeah. Mile. So I used to knock on pe people doors when I was having a slow day in the field. I would go knock on the door and tell them exactly what they're gonna tell me. Look, I know you're not interested. I know you ain't got no time. I know you ain't got no money. I know somebody was just here. I know your cats having dogs and the dogs is having cats. <laughs> but can I just say one thing? Like I so. I recreated myself, and then now they can't tell me that. You know how many people I used to tell that to, and they start laughing like y'all did, and then they making a check out the ADP, all dark people. Yeah. So at the end of the day, <laughs> I looked at it like you know, like it was nothing. See, it's nothing outside these doors can stop nobody from winning except for they self. That's it. Cause they like they said, if you think you can, you right. If you think you can't, you still right. Cause them your thoughts. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like you just gotta change your thinking. That's the whole thing. Yeah, I, lo I love you said mind game. Yeah. Because by the way, at the end of the day, this is a game. Exactly. Okay, this is a game. Just in case, and some people take this so serious that they, they it's not a game no more right. and then what happens is when's the last time you've seen a sales a serious salesperson do anything never right. they're always the broke people serious right, salespeople are always the broke people Facts. and then the people that don't and now listen if you're serious about winning you take your life serious but at the end of the day you know this man if your people don't like you it ain't gonna work if, if you're not having fun with what you do it ain't gonna work if you're not being passionate about what you do it ain't gonna work look we're in a society right now where a lot of people just really aren't passionate about anything anymore right. everybody's just barely doing their job barely getting away man imagine I'm like when's the last time you went to a gas station and a person was just jacked up fired up to serve you nobody <laughs> yeah. okay and I like what you said how you told them what they were already thinking before they told you that's some good shit and if you're listening to that you're not gonna be able to do that if you don't practice it right okay it just doesn't work work like you got to practice that shit for for a long time right. and you got to write it down and you got to say it to yourself and he said he looked sure. in the mirror and he saw what he looked like when he did it and you're like dude I don't like the way I look yeah. so then what'd you do you did it again right. did it again did it again yeah. and I just think though that talk about that state that you're able to change with people mm. the way you're able to break the ice the comedy look you weren't always funny maybe you were right but uh, I, man i'm gonna tell you this a lot of people out there aren't that funny right. right but you can learn to be funny and how do you do it well you said smile because mm -hmm. he ain't gonna smile it ain't gonna work number two you probably smile with your eyes when you go to somebody's door right yeah. you probably look at them like you already know them when you're talking to them, right? right so if you're doing that guys look we don't know each other i mean to this point like i've watched him for a long time i know who he is you know but when you meet you know we, we know each other that's it it's it's that simple that's people need to connect with people in life right that's how it is people forget that stuff look dude if you act like you don't know somebody or if you look at them like you don't know them, they ain't gonna know you yeah. but if you believe that you know them and if you look at, at them like you know them and if you talk to them like you know them you guys are gonna know each other mm. that's it that's and I think true. a lot of people are really just disconnected they they want to make the money but they don't want to connect right. and I think one of the things that you do is that you connect with all your customers right. And you could probably tell stories for years about how many people you connected with. Now, at the end, you got the sell, but really the win was the connection. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's yeah. why they wrote the check. And they probably maybe did or didn't need the product, <clears throat> right. but they liked you, so they're willing to write whatever you want. Yeah. But I'm just telling, um, before, before we end, any last thing that you want to say right. that's maybe on your heart, man? Yeah, well, like, what I love about sales is that one thing that I learned is that people don't like the body, like to be sold. Mm -hmm. So you got so many people that's pushy salespeople and they come to the door with dollar signs, you know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of making that friend and they forget that that's the first thing you gotta do. You gotta make a friend, you know what I mean? Yeah. Cause we problem solvers at the end of the day, you know what I mean? And when you can change someone's mind, you, you win. And like you said, people don't know how to play the game of life. It's really the game of life. Mm -hmm. And like this journey been so amazing because like who would have ever thought like like that this from 12 years old took me to this you know what i mean like it's so many like and and i i'm not even i'm not nowhere near i want to be but I, I like i do know that i like did a lot of stuff that i i would have made my grandmother proud you mm -hmm. know what i mean yeah, like, absolutely i remember reading this book called the secret i don't know if you heard of that yeah, book. a law of attraction and now i'm in the documentary called the secret too 
That's with cool. Bob Proctor, rest in peace. He just passed away. But I told my story in this documentary because about like, like they interviewed me just like you, and he was like, "It's just the law of attraction." Like I manifest this, you know what I mean? And that's what people fail to realize: a confident salesperson, they speak stuff into existence, and then yeah. they execute it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you, like I'm pretty sure when you in sales, if you like selling cars or something, you be like, you know what? The next person come in, I'm gonna close this deal, and Every then you day. close that deal. But if you tell us that, oh, it's been a slow day. It's gonna be a slow You're day. Dead. You know what I mean? So is that it's just that you just gotta watch what you say because whatever you put in the universe, it will follow you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's all about manifestation and just attacking it, you know what I'm saying, the right way. Yeah. And that's what I look at. Like I didn't I, like it's so much stuff that I didn't did just from going door to door. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I am in documentaries, I didn't did T V shows, I just did wilding out with Nick Cannon. I didn't I got an award called Be Like Kenny Award where I give out to UFC fighters just off of me not giving up. Yeah. So I look at it like if you don't get up it's gonna take you beyond measures that you ever, ever would have thought you know what i mean yeah. and this is just somebody just just coming from you know the inner city and that's why they say the smartest people don't come from harvard and yale they come through adversity that's you know it. what i mean so yeah and hey one of the things that i want to say you said this in the very beginning and i want to tell you basically look at any point in time when you quit you go back to the starting line okay you you never quit Right. That's the reason why, and you're going to continue to keep rolling, but that's the reason why you are here today and all that great stuff's happened. Um, every single person watching this right now, he clearly has given every answer to the test on how your life can change. I mean, truly. And at the end of the day, I think a lot of people judge people, right? You were right. talking about when you met Jamie Foxx, you're talking about your teeth, blacker than black. <laughs> right. this. Dude, at the end of the day, dude, who you are, who God made you to be, man, dude, you can do it no matter who you are, what you look like, what's going on, okay? Right. You just got to self-improve your, your life. You got to level up every day. Right. You got to get around people who want to see you win, right? You got to get rid of some friends, I'm yeah, sure, right? That's a fact. And then at the end of the day, you're also leading your family right now, mm -hmm. right? You're taking care of your kids. You're taking care of your life. You're taking care of stuff. Dude, if you're, if you're out there and you have a family, if you're really wanting to get in this and go hard, you got to start making sure that you take good care of your family. You can't be one-dimensional. You can't go out and make a whole bunch of money and not take care of your family. Also, you said you looked up to Kobe and you talked about his work ethic, his grind, his drive. Everybody, you said you, you listened to um, uh, not Eminem, but you said Lil Wayne and all them, and you got yourself fired up every day. Look, every day you get yourself in a state. You get yourself ready to row. You said you would listen to that, and you'd go through the neighborhoods, and you'd crush it. Right. You probably still do that stuff to this day, and you have those rituals down mm -hmm. anytime you're going to go do something, right? Right. Once you can figure out what works, you don't ever change it. Exactly. Never, until you die. Yeah. And this is one big game. And once you can learn these little deals that make you operate, because me and you might be different, right? Mm -hmm. Like I gotta go hit the gym and then you listen to music, right? right? Or I make, but you gotta know you, right? Exactly. And at the end of the day, you said one guy, you would take him out in the field and he would try to be you, to say the same thing, the dry eye guy. And you're like, dude, man, you just gotta be you, exactly. right? So whoever you are, like you've got someone inside of you that you hadn't met yet, mm -hmm. right? And that's what happened to you. You ripped that dude out and you're still ripping him out today. Right? Like there's a guy inside of you that you hadn't met yet and he's like 50 times cooler than you are right now. And right. same with me. Mm -hmm. And that's why I tell my team and that's what we tell everybody else. So it's about recreating every single day, but don't freaking quit. Right. And he said with adversity, which means if you're eating a shit sandwich right now, like next door is success. Okay, so the last, that next no, that next grind, that next, you know, everything is gone, you know, you're back to zero again. Guess what, man? Um, Dude, you're this close to making it happen. Right. So I just want to tell you, man, we're proud of you. I, I like your story. I love it. I think it's cool. I know you're writing a really cool story right now. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people right now, you said um, something in the beginning, and, and we'll finish with this, is you said, I think being, uh, being in, in college for four years and knocking doors, it's the same. I think this, if you knock doors for one month, it's equivalent to 20 years of life. <laughs> right. That's what I think, okay? Right. No, that is. Because I, I truly think that we got a lot of cats right now that are selling that are selling warm lead companies. Mm -hmm. They just get warm leads. Like people come in wanting to buy from them and stuff. Right. Until you've done something where you have to go and knock on someone's door and sell something that they don't want and they don't want to see you, you force yourself and test yourself right. like never before. That's true. You want to, some of you guys think you get rejected. <laughs> This is extreme rejection. Right. And when you get slapped like that, guess yeah. what happens? 
well, going back into a business that has warm leads and people calling in about products, you're yeah. like, dude, yeah. this is what you guys do? It's a no-brainer. This like, is stupid. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you go in and have to talk to somebody. So I think everybody, if, they're, if you're not in door-to-door, go and initiate conversations with people you don't know. Right. Even just, you know, walk by somebody, hey, how you doing? Hope you're having a great day. Yeah. Just do something like that that makes you feel awkward, right? Something that tests you. Would you agree? No, that's true. Yeah, something that tests you because yeah. that's how that guy was built. He was built when he was battle tested. He was built when his back was against the wall and, you know, you didn't know whether somebody was going to like you or not. And then guess what? And then if you're trying to initiate something and they don't like you, guess what? That's good for you to get rejected. Right. It's good for you to know that you're going to get told no and that people don't like you. Right. Because you've got to understand this. He said that, look, people say, hey, I don't like your black jokes. Hey, I don't like this. Look, dude, he don't care. Right. Like, he really don't care. He's not standing up at night saying, why did she write that comment? Sure. No, dude, he's got 10,000 other people that are saying, thank you so much for putting out that, com- that, that content, right. right? Look, if you're looking to get offended, you're going to find it, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And I think a lot of people are just looking to get offended in yeah. life, they and that's what they the do. Yeah. yeah, dude, we don't care about none of that. What we care about is we're going in the right direction. We're helping people. And also, at the end of the day, if you care what other people think, dude, you're going to have the worst life in the world. (laughs) You know? So, Kenny, I appreciate you, man. Much love. I know you're going to smash everybody out. Um, Here at the Elliott Group, we had him come out, Scottsdale, Arizona. You guys make sure you check him out on YouTube. He's going to be killing it. In the next uh, 10 years, I want you to take over the world. Let's go, brother. Thank you, brother. Kill it. Appreciate it.